What is going on guys, Victor here, and today I'm doing another one of these crazy, bizarre catch and cooks. So last week I uploaded a video of us eating anchovies, also called glass minnows, and you guys loved it. I got so much positive feedback, so I want to thank you guys for watching that video. So today Brooke and I are out here, we're going to do a little bit of snapper fishing, but I thought to myself, I really want to cook them all. I'm not kidding when I say that. I want to try every single fish species we have here in Florida, including bait, and what better way to continue that series than with ballyhoo. So we just put a chum bag in the water. We are in South Florida right out of Pompano Beach. We're waiting for the ballyhoo to show up behind the boat. I'm going to air out the net and we're going to eat some ballyhoo today. It's showtime. I was getting a little bit discouraged because we got out here and we did not see a ballyhoo for a good amount of time, but we got the chum in the water. I'm about to throw the net and they are fired up so much that they're eating right at the boat, which is going to make it really easy to cast net these guys. There we go. They're in there. When you throw, you know when you got them. You can kind of tell they kind of jump up into the net, back up into it. We got dinner, son! Wow. Never thought I'd say that about Ballyhoo, but we got dinner. So I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what these are. But for those of you who may be watching this Catch and Cook video, just because you're intrigued at what it is or the title, so these right here are Ballyhoo. You know, a lot of people who are just getting into fishing or something, a little kid might say it's a swordfish because they have this little bill right here. And unlike billfish, which have the bill on the top part, these actually have the bill on the bottom of the mouth right here. And they're actually called half beaks all around the world. Excellent snapper bait. Oh. That one gets another chance at life. Um, there's something on this one. What is it? Oh, look at this. This one's got a parasite. Looks like a parasite. Oh my gosh, look, it's growing inside the fish. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're eating baits filled with parasites today. Let's not eat that one. Look at this thing. He is literally dug himself, he dug a hole into that ballyhoo, and that is an open wound. That's crazy to think about that fish can survive stuff like that. You know when you always think about if a fish lives after they got a hook in them or something? That literally had a living being drill the hole into its body, and now... Yeah, we're, we're letting that one go. I don't want no part of that parasite thing. Cause look at that thing, it's gnarly. Never seen a ballyhoo with one of those things in it, but that was pretty cool. Oh, look at this guy. He's got a chunk missing out of him. I wonder if that's from a parasite or from a fish. So as I was saying, guys, these are called half beaks, otherwise known as ballyhoo. A lot of people use them for trolling. A lot of people use them for snapper bait. They're used all around the world. Probably the most versatile, useful bait fish offshore. But today, they're gonna be dinner. Well, tomorrow, we gotta catch a qu a quite a bit of them because these guys don't look like they have too much meat on them. So let's get to throwing that net and filling up this cord. All right guys, this is gonna be cast net number two for the value. And I'm having a tough time seeing them because it's getting dark. But I think we got them. We didn't get a lot because they were, the value seems to be more towards that left side. I just can't see because it's a little dark out right now. Look at this big, juicy ballyhoo. I really am curious as to what they're gonna taste like. So, Rick and I are gonna continue snapper fishing. These guys are going in the cooler, and I will see you guys back at the flay table, and we're gonna clean them up. So, a week ago, I launched uh, a line of t-shirts under the name of Landshark Gear, which is gonna be my new apparel line. I originally just had the Landshark logo, but check this out, guys. I got two all-new shirts. This is a Snook logo, and then I also have this tarpon which are just these beautiful pieces of work and these are dye sublimated shirts very very comfy and they just look amazing i'm very happy with the way they came out so if you guys are interested in those they will be in the description box below another thing is you guys have a chance to win free giveaways i'm going to be doing weekly monthly giveaways on my facebook page on landshark gear and on the instagram landshark gear page so if you guys want to keep up to date with the new merch that's dropping and all sorts of stuff and who doesn't like free stuff? Both will be linked in the description box below. Before we start filleting, there's actually a couple of big jacks that have been hanging around Brooks Canal because we've been filleting before. I want to show you guys real quick. Drop them straight down, throw them out. Watch this. Bam. Those jacks fired up in Brooks Canal. Because you know, a lot of people always ask us, what do you guys do with the carcasses and waste? And people say, you guys waste so much. Look at this. These fish are eating. There is no waste there. And there's a giant school of catfish. All right, anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. 
As you guys heard me say on the boat earlier, these are also called half beaks, ballyhoo. They are just a very universal bait, but I've never heard of anyone actually eating them. So we're gonna go ahead and do a taste test. And the way I'm gonna fillet these guys is I already did it once. And I originally wanted to just knock the scales off, scale them and eat them with the skin on since they do not have a lot of meat. And you know, I did not wanna be very wasteful. But what I turned out happening is that these guys are extremely bony, which you guys are about to see in a second. And so when you knock the, um, the scales off and I was gonna eat them with the skin on, your meat yield is so low that it's not worth it to go through all that trouble. I will show you guys how little meat you actually get off of these ballyhoo. So that is them with the skin off. There's the skin and they got these really tough scales too, not something you want to eat. Because I know a lot of people like to eat fish whole and we eat them whole on this channel too, especially snapper. So this is the back side of them and they got a pretty big bloodline which usually gives fish a really fishy flavor. When you fillet snapper grouper or something, the bones along the bloodline kind of end halfway along the body. So you just kind of cut that off and then it turns into a V. Whereas this, a ballyhoo, they got a bloodline and they got bones that run all up and down them, which you got to take out because you don't want to eat these bones. They're not something small like an anchovy where you, you know, you're going to eat them. This is basically your end product. I'm not kidding. You don't get a lot of meat off of these guys. So I set that aside because this, if you look here and you listen to my knife, you can kind of hear it. That's all bone. So I was trying, you know, all sorts of different ways to just get as much meat off of these fish as possible, but there really wasn't. No matter how much, how much finesse and, and delicacy you put into there, you really don't get that much meat because this is just ends up being all bone and hard stuff. So we're gonna feed this to our fish friends and let's fillet the other side. And also if you guys do attempt this or try it, you gotta be very careful because um, they're so thin that your knife can end up going to the other side of the fish. So just kind of gently really ride it like that. I messed up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and skin him again. Okay, so what I'm doing with the other side too is, oh wow, look, this ballyhoo has worms. No way. Yeah, a fish this small, I don't know if you can see it, if the camera can focus, Brooke, but this fish, as small as it is, has worms in it too. But they're so small and we're not actually eating that part. I'm gonna cut right on the outside of it. And so there you go. So out of that one giant ballyhoo, it ended up being just a bunch of bones and guts and you don't get a lot of meat off these guys. There's probably a reason people don't eat them. And even if you were to eat them whole, you'd be picking through so many bones that it's just not worth it. But I'm really curious to see how they're gonna taste. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock the sides off of a few more and then I will see you guys in the kitchen. We're gonna cook them up. We're gonna find out once and for all how these guys taste. All right, for the cooking portion of this video, it is not my typical catch and cook just because I don't have a lot of meat to work with and I didn't want to make some elaborate recipe for the sake of a few ballyhoo fillets because honestly, you don't get a lot of meat like you guys saw. So I just went very simple. We did butter, lemon, garlic powder, salt, very light seasoning. And I just, you know, it was a fun experiment, a taste test to really kind of just get the flavor of the ballyhoo itself and to show people that you can eat them. And as you guys see that they kind of even look freaky. I mean, just there are these long snake-like strips that probably a lot of people, if they got this on their dinner plate, would be like, uh-uh, that's not for me. Just the pure shape of it. I mean, it doesn't look that appetizing, but you guys are about to see the taste test in a little bit. And as far as the texture, um, they were pretty firm. They were very flaky. I didn't notice anything bad. They weren't too oily or anything. Um, so just lightly pan fried them, put them on a paper plate, and now let's get to see what everyone thinks. Eat at it. Just eat at it? Yeah, just eat it. Make you go first. I'll go first. Everyone else is too scared. I am. You're I, scared? I, I am. Come on. I don't know why, right. but I am. First bite. I have to get another piece. Made a lot. Tastes like any other fish. Does it? it doesn't taste great, but it doesn't taste bad. It just tastes like fish. 
It's not fishy. It's got a, it's got a distinct little ballyhoo taste, I'd say. What do you think, Jed? It's good. Surprisingly good. Come on, try it. Brian's afraid. Brickstead is afraid. Okay. Ballyhoo. Hmm. I have to admit, I was scared to try Ballyhoo. So is Brook. Hmm. It does have a bit of a unique taste, but not in a bad way. No. no. I wouldn't keep um, sticking my fork in there if it was bad. I was scared, but it's, after you eat one bite, it's not scary. You were terrified the most out of all of us to eat I it. think I was. Well, you said it was going to be really bad, judging by the meat, which I'll admit they have really black, dark meat. The meat was like dark gray. It's honestly good. It tastes like any fish. It's fresh. It's not like it was frozen. Um, he did cut out all the bloodline. No, I didn't. I didn't cut out any bloodline either. You're eating all the bloodline too. They're okay. so small that you have to eat it with the bloodline. The only pieces that taste a little bit fishy is with the pieces where you left some of the skin on. But besides that, it just tastes like white meat fish. The only thing was... I mean, this was how many you think, Victor? This was probably 10 ballyhoo. At least 10. And it takes a really long time to fillet them. And this is all you got out of it, which is like a little tiny snack for all of us. Yeah. So would I do it again? Probably no. not. No, we'd keep them as bait. But it's just to show you guys the whole point of these videos is to sh to get that stupid stigma out there that is this fish good i can't stand when i hear that from now on because if you were in a life or death situation or whatever if you guys just wanted to try it as an experiment there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever it tastes no. it tastes like snapper it, it has a it has a distinct taste but i can't pinpoint it it's not bad it's just it's, it's definitely not bad it's not bad at all it's yeah. flaky <laughs> yeah it's, it's very flaky it's just it's a really time consuming process it's not something that's really practical especially for feeding a lot of people but oh definitely not i would suggest trying it you know try everything once in your life and as always there are no trash fish just, just trash, trash cooks <laughs> and we have eaten blue runners bonitas anchovies um jack Cravels. now we have yet to do ladyfish what else we got left? We gotta do stingray. I wanna eat sand fleas. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think there's any meat there. Brooks' brother wants to try sand fleas. So going back to what I was saying, get this whole theory out of your head that there's a list of good fish and a list of bad fish. There's some fish that are better than others, but there's no such thing as a bad one. There's no such thing as something you can't eat. And there's, there, frankly, it amazes me how many people we encounter especially doing this for a living that say, can you eat that? They don't even ask as if, it's gonna taste good or bad. They're like, can you eat it? Like they're terrified of eating bonita or they're terrified of eating kingfish because some guy a hundred years ago told them that this was bad and it just got passed down from generation to generation. And that's it. Well, I wouldn't think like, oh, hey, let's eat some ballyhoo. Like it's just not something that I would wanna eat. I mean, we use it to catch what we think is table fare when really, if you were to give me a plate of ballyhoo, blindfold me. Give me a bite of ballyhoo and give me a bite of the of yellowtail cooked the same way. You wouldn't really notice. And they'd probably taste yeah. close to the same. Protein is protein. There's no rules in the jungle. There's no rules in the animal kingdom. Everything is food. So that's that's the whole moral message of the video. If you guys want to see us eat something specific next, comment in the comment section below, whether it be ladyfish or something. Whatever fish gets the most votes, I'll try to do that video next. Until that next one, I'll see all you guys, my land sharks, in that next video. Do you feel the pain?